Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor and welcome to 2021. What a weird year it's turning out to be. <laughs> it feels like it's been forever since I've sat down to film a video because it kind of has been. Um, if you guys didn't see, I did Vlogmas over the month of December and this is my first sit down video of 2021, which I'm very excited about. I'm avoiding reality because reality is a weird place to be right now, but uh, let's talk about something that does make me beautifully happy, and that is some of my favorite books that I read in 2020. So let's go ahead and get into it. So as we all know, 2020 was 2020, so I definitely avoided a bit of reality and read over a hundred books in 2020, which is the most I've ever counted reading in a year, which is crazy. So I'm pretty proud of myself. I read 102 books in total, which I think related out to about 26,000 pages, give or take. I'll try and put the number actually here. But yeah, I'm really excited about that. Normally, I don't get anywhere even close to that. I hit 85, which was my original good good reads goal back, I think, in... October. So I was like, screw it, let's go for it. Let's freaking do it. And I did it. So one positive from 2020 on the board. So without further ado, these are some of my favorite books that I did read in 2020. The first being Break Your Glass Slippers by Amanda Lovelace. This is part of her um, like princess fairy tale poem retellings. I found Amanda Lovelace a couple years ago and have read all of her sequential books in this series ever since, and I love them. They're a little bit Instagram-y poetry, if you know what I mean, but they're still, obviously you can see by the multiple tabs that I have in here, some that always definitely speak to my soul when I'm reading these. So I just think they're so great. They're very empowering. They're very just cute, fun, kind of touching books to read. This one I will say I think was one of my least favorites because I'm trying to remember, but I think this was one she had other people contribute to. I might be mistaken, maybe. But okay, yeah, this was I think with a couple other people that contributed to it. So I do like her specific reading, not reading, writing. Um, so this wasn't my favorite of hers, but definitely a really solid read for sure. Next is by another one of my all-time favorite authors, and that is Mila Gray. And these are the, I don't actually know what the series of these are called, but this is her kind of marine love story series. Um, they all kind of are in the same world. The characters intersect across all of the books, which I really like. Um, it's kind of reminiscent of one of my other favorite romance authors, Sarah Dessen, does that in a lot of her later books. So I just think these are really cute. I read them super fast. I'm actually right now in the middle of her latest one that came out at the end of 2020, which is called Fallen to Me. I think. Um, but this was Watch Over Me. This is about a girl named Zoe and Tristan um, who fall in love and there's a lot of familial drama that happens with Zoe's dad. This again wasn't one of my favorites of her books. Um, it was a lot of kind of, there was a lot of rep repetition in this one which I found to be kind of a little bit annoying and the older I'm getting to these are skewing a little younger for me um but I do still really like them one of her books is actually one of my favorites which is called come back to me oh run away with me was the other one that she wrote so yeah I really really like these and uh yeah this again was one of my favorites for the year I will say my reading for this year however overall because I think I was reading more for quantity rather than quality was my least favorite reading year of the past few. Um, there just was a lot of stuff that I was reading that was like eh. I think there was a lot of stuff that I was just reading to try and bump up my numbers so I think moving forward I'm definitely going to be try to be reading more things for quality over quantity since I did finally hit my 100 book goal that I've been striving for for the last few years so moving forward my numbers won't be as high but hopefully my ratings will be. Okay next I definitely got into graphic novels this year which were some that were like really awful and some that were really really great and two series that I 
love and I'm definitely gonna be continuing into 2021 is Heartstopper by Alice Oseman and Five Worlds by Mark and Alexis Siegel. I love both of these series so much. This is a sci-fi fantasy sort of world graphic novel with like the most beautiful art ever and it's about a girl who is a what is she called a sand uh dancer she's a sand dancer who can, can like control the elements and it's kind of complicated to explain he is a sports player star athlete uh there's a boy from the slums it's a really interesting series i love the world this is in there's like tree people and robots and all different kinds of species and like i just think it's so cool so again i'm definitely going to be picking up the last book in the series i think this is the last one when it comes out this year so i'm very excited about that and of course, Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. Everyone loves this here on booktube. So I think this is just a really cute graphic novel about two boys falling in love. And yeah, it's long, but you can read them so quickly. Like it just flows really well. And I just think their relationship is really cute. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see where it goes. Okay, next I have a book I read at the beginning of this year, which was so so good and this is The Boy at the Top of the Mountain by John Boyne who is the author of The Boy in the Striped Pajamas and if you saw my 20 books I want to read in 2020 this was on that list so I did get to some of those books I think I only ended up getting I think to like five or six of the 20 but this was definitely one of them and I'm so glad that I read it because it was amazing it's about a boy who goes to live in a house in Germany who ends up being a house where Hitler lives kind of crazy there's a lot of crazy stuff that happens but it's so good like it just hurts your heart some of the things that happen in this book you end up I can't spoil it but just the main character is a horrible person <laughs> um in a lot of ways so yeah I just thought this was so powerful and so good and anything John Boyne writes I'm obsessed with so this was really great Okay, along the same kind of vein of heart-touching books, this is Wish Tree by Catherine Applegate. I've read a lot of Catherine Applegate this year and really enjoyed a lot of them. This is a story in the perspective of a tree and she has people tie wishes to her and there's a new family that moves into town and gets treated rather poorly by their family and neighbors or their neighbors in the community and I just thought this was so cute it was just very sweet adorable middle grade it touched my heart I'm still one of those books that you think about after you put it down and I just thought it was amazing next two books are part of the same series but they are the toll and thunderhead by neil schusterman so i finished the series in 2020 i read scythe last year in 2019 and was really into it this series is such a trip especially thunderhead i think this is definitely one of my favorite sequels i think i've ever read it just was so climactic and so great and i just thought it was so action-filled i loved it so desperately I'm actually thinking about this book more as time's gone gone on than this one to be honest there's a lot of things that I have forgotten about the toll but overall just as a series I think this one is fantastic if you guys haven't checked it out do so especially if you're like me and you love dystopian type books these are great and the last book on my list for my favorite books that I read in 2020 is a little bit of a random one, but it is Photo Arc by Joel Sartor. I'm probably mispronouncing that, but this is a book that I got off of Book Outlet earlier this year, and it is just a beautiful, beautiful photography book of animals. And I'm trying to find, like, penguins and ugh, birds there's more than just birds hold on <laughs> that's more birds oh my gosh there's more than birds in here hold on there we go monkeys and goats oh my <laughs> but look this photography is just so 
visually stunning and I just love his photography so much. I'm obsessed with animals and just loved learning about new animals that I've never even heard of before in here. I have some new favorites and I just think if you guys haven't checked this one out, if you love cool interesting coffee table type books or even just really cool photos of animals, this in this whole project itself that he's been working on is amazing. He actually has a couple of different books in the series as well. One about endangered animals and then there's I think one about different like breeds of animals so like birds um and different things like that I have to look into it more but definitely one about the endangered ones that I've read as well which is another favorite so if you guys haven't checked this one out definitely do so it's pretty freaking great <laughs> Alright friends, so that is the eight-ish or so books that I really ended up loving in 2020. Like I said, it was a weird year. I'm glad I read the books that I did, but these were some of my favorites, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Please let me know down in the comments below which books were your favorite that you read last year, what books are you interested in reading in 2021, and I will talk to you guys down in the comments. Please subscribe to see more of my face, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!